Hello everybody and welcome back to Letterboxd Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. And today is a little different because it's Halloween and this is just going to be a fun little spooky episode. Happy Halloween! Our time to thrive. Woohoo, it is spooky season. And let me tell you, nothing gets Australians riled up. More than Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it's an American celebration, who cares? <laughs> who cares? You know what? Let the children knock on my door. I love kids. <laughs> so this episode, really, we're going to have a quick run through of haunting... Adeline, Hunting Adeline, I think the Hunting second book. Adeline, yeah. uh, Kenzie's going to recap that because she is an absolute darling and she finished the book. <laughs> she suffered for us. And then we're just going to go through some uh, spooky places in Australia, like list the, asylums, jails. List some haunted places and some spooky stories from Reddit and BuzzFeed and all that type of stuff. And then talk about any of our own personal ghost experiences, perhaps. Yes. So it's going to be fun, fun, fun. Yes. If you are uninterested, please skip to the 9 minute and 12th second mark. Okay, so, Hunting Adeline. <laughs> um, okay, so a little bit is already in at the end of Haunting Adeline. Yeah. Um, but also trigger warnings for brutal, intense sexual assault. Child trafficking stuff. Child trafficking, sex trafficking in general, the skin trade, blood play. It's gnarly. It's a lot of yeah, stuff. Um, torture, kidnapping. Sure. Yeah, we can sure, end it there. Lots of things. Um, oh, and somnophilia. <laughs> Basically, if you hadn't read Haunting Adeline, then yeah, this is going to yeah. be... Also, yeah, I thought I'd mention it because um, on my Kindle, I did not get the trigger warnings. And before anyone comes at me like, you should have just gone to her website. Um, what if I didn't know that? <laughs> what if I'm a reader and I look at Kindle and I say that it's free? I'm like, I'm going to buy this book and there's no triggers and there's no indication to go and find the trigger. And then I read this book and my brain is mush forever. But Kenzie, you've read Haunting Adeline. Surely you would have known. Here's my thing. Haunting Adeline. I can suspend my disbelief. <laughs> sure, the government are performing rituals on children and young women and young men and they're draining their blood and they're all lizard people. That's fine. <laughs> the end of the day... That can happen, sure. I'm sure it does happen, all right? But a uh, book takes it to a whole new level. Um, I am a woman. I have a lot of women identifying friends. I have a daughter. Um, I'm sure, and I'm very aware that there is sex trafficking and the skin trade. And this takes it a step beyond. understand that happens. I didn't need to be told in intense detail or what goes on. I mean, we don't know if it's actually true, yeah. but like, it seems pretty out there. Yeah. But um, Who caught the author? Who, yeah, H.D. Carlton, yeah. who hurt you? Yeah. Are you okay? Um, also, I've said it before, I will say it again, I will be taking. I will be saying it until the day I die, I don't think sexual assault, brutality and torture should be used for monetary gain. Or at least sexual brutality and sexual torture. Yeah, that type I don't of thing. think it should be used um, as a form of entertainment because reading is a form of entertainment. For sure. Um, I don't think it should not be written about. I think you can write about sexual assault because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have experienced sexual assault and they want that... Um, representation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be described to this brutal detail that it was. Yep. So what happened in Hunting Adeline? Okay. Um, so as you would have heard, um, Adeline is put into a sex trafficking halfway house with a madam where they train the girls to be good little sex slaves. Um, lots of things happen. I recapped it in the other one. I don't want to go there again. <laughs> um, but, like, the main point, really, is that there's a man and he is going to buy Adeline. She costs $12 million. That's a lot of money, though. He, she, he like, pays for her. but And then so he likes to come and sexually assault her. And as he's doing that, he likes to cut her as he's doing it. Because he's like, look at the pretty red blood. Ew. Um, yeah, that, that's a lot. Um, anyway. And then she escapes with the help of a friend, sort of, who... Um, his name is Rio. I didn't mention him. But he kind of looks after her a little bit. But he is kind of enslaved as well because they have his sister at another house. Oh, okay. Um, he says to Adeline, he's like, if you get out, like, this is my sister's name, like, help her. So Adeline gets out. She's rescued by Zaid. I really think she needs some intense trauma therapy. Of but course. apparently they didn't do that. <laughs> um, so Zaid is helping her. Zaid, what does Zaid have? Um, a problem. <laughs> no, like a commune. Oh, yeah. women. <laughs> Zaid has a, uh, a farmland situation <laughs> where all the women that he rescues um, that don't have family to go back to, they all get to live together and they can garden. That is fucked up. <laughs> How 
Yeah, his. But there's a, like a five year old there as well. Like, because oh, that cute. makes it okay. Yeah, she's like, "Are you gonna be my daddy now?" Oh my god, it's very sad. That is fucking. Yeah. Oh my god, but like that's just the thing that it turns around. It's like he does this these great things, you know, taking down and looking mm. after these women, but mm. then he stalks and is creepy as fuck towards Adeline. Like, I just don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. And people find it romantic. Yeah. I don't get it. Um, and so he also self harms That's fun. Um, he carves a rose above his heart because <sighs> the rose motif and also because he's like, it's my fault Adeline was taken, so I need to harm myself. Oh, Jesus. And then when Adeline is rescued afterwards or whatever, she gets him to carve a rose on her. Oh, my God. Branded together. And then she also gets him to, like, reopen, like, her scars from the guy who was sexually assaulting her because she's like... When I look at them, I just want to think of you. I'm sure there are other ways to do this. <laughs> like, maybe she could have gotten him to tattoo them or something. Yeah, maybe. Um, a lot. Um, <laughs> they oh, hunt down and kill Claire and the madam from the house and then the madam's brother. That's fun. Oh, oh, and then God. the man who was also going to buy Addie, kill him. That's fun. Sibby from the carnival from Satan's Affair joins them, the crazy doll lady. She's fun, then she disappears. Yeah, I made a mistake. I assumed that she was in on it, but obviously I, I read that I entirely thought she wrong. I thought she was in on it, but she's not. Um, anyway. It just sounds like hopelessness and despair yeah. and, and fucking... And then Addie obviously has nightmares, and she says the name of her abuser from the sex trafficking house. So then Zade's like, well, I'm going to put my peen in her now. And she wakes up, and she's like, what the fuck? And he's like, I want to be the monster in your head. Like, when you think of them, you'll think of me, like, inside you. <sighs> oh, my God. I'm the only one who can haunt your dreams, fucking baby. Hell. Jesus Christ. Little mouse. <laughs> Some cheese. <laughs> Nibble. <laughs> um, and then at the end, they do anal. Um, it's Kenzie's favourite thing in the really world. It's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> just descriptions. Um, it was in the epilogue, and you said it just went forever. It went for 20 minutes. It was 20 minutes of epilogue of <laughs> anal. Of gratuitous. It's like, it's like yeah. she just wanted to add the yeah. anal in there. Yeah, and just then he, drive it home. And then he proposes. And then Addie is like, is this because you love me? Oh, they admit they love each other, which is like fucked up. Um, but Addie's like, is this because you love me or is this a reward for the anal? Because like, oh, like, her mind's now twisted. Yeah. Poor girl. Um, that's fun. She said yes, I guess. She said yes. Yeah. Oh my God. There's also lots of me- mention of him like impregnating her and her being swollen with his child. Um, and then he implied that he ripped out her IUD while she was sleeping. But he didn't. It's fine. But he's like, God. I needed to know that you wanted to stay with me. Oh, my God. Even if, like, you're pregnant, like, would you just stay with me for the child? Or, she like, never wanted to be with you, bro. Yeah, because he's, like, he's like, I'm going to come and you, like, what if you get pregnant? And she's like, I have an IUD. And he's like, do you? Oh, my God. And then they're, like, fucking. And then so he, like, comes in her because he's like, well, I needed to know, like, if you would just stay with me out of obligation or if you, like, or if you wanted me to, like, run the risk of impregnating you. And he's like, I didn't take your IUD out. And she's like, I haven't even ovulated anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, and the book ends. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Yeah. Yes. And I need to take my brain out and scrub it. <laughs> need to scrub yeah. the inside of his gut. Because Kenzie was recap- sending me voice notes as she was reading it. And she just sounded so sad. The first defeated. Half, okay, the first half... <laughs> was disgusting and I will never get past it and it's going to haunt my dreams just as Zaid haunts Addie's dreams <laughs> without the somnophilia. <laughs> um, the second half was just stupid. Yeah, it's, it's just it's a little goofy. Yeah, it's goofy. Yeah. Oh, thank you for enjoying that for us, Kenzie. You're welcome. Um, don't ask me to do it. The Satan's Affair, that yeah. book sounds pretty good Yeah, though. not that you asked me to do it, but don't ask me to do it again. But, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll never like, make you reread it. Yeah, and I thought Ice Planet Barbarians was bad. <laughs> yeah, no. Ice Planet Barbarians is a fucking comedy compared yeah. to this. Oh, also, um, automatic one star for the use of cock and pussy and cunt, and he licked me right up my slit. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> How else are they meant to describe it, Kenzie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. How about Labia of... Majora? <laughs> Round of applause for Kenzie. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. I deserve a goddamn rest. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve. I will pay for a therapy session. <laughs> I'll lie to them. <laughs> Alrighty, spooky stuff. All right, Halloween. Let's go. let's go. Perhaps kick off with any personal stories or any like haunted-ish places we've been to. All right, I'll start off with a couple of personal stories from my childhood. Okay. Um. So when I was a kid, we lived in a really really old house. That used to be like B and B back in the day, um, for like horse horse and carriage people. So like oh, way okay. back in the day, right? So I was super fucking old. Sorry, I just realised B and B meant bed and breakfast, not like like an abbreviated Airbnb situation. <laughs> I think the air 
it's for like internet bed and breakfast sure yeah i don't well, know i don't know anyway okay so like bb anyway so um at night um i used to get like pulled out of bed <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> fucking terrifying. Yeah, and then not like violently, just like a little tug. That's even worse. And then so like the blankets used to be like pulled off me. As Are well. we sure you just weren't subconsciously moving in your sleep? I mean, maybe, but like my grandma said that like she saw like the entity. <sighs> what was it like? A man, woman? It was Did... a woman, but like an angry woman, very oh. angry woman in her B and B. Jesus um, Christ. And then um, at another house that we lived in, above my bed every night would be a red light on the roof. And like you'd have no red light anywhere. No red light. You'd look out, look and nothing was shining in. Like we'd shut the curtains. Like like a sniper. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like a big like like, like a big red light. Like, like red light orb thing. Yeah, like an orby thing. Oh like my a patch god. Of red. Yeah. And like we'd have we shut the curtain, it would still be there. We like shut the bedroom door, it would still be there. There's nothing coming from anywhere. It's a portal, bro. Yeah. We didn't have any clocks or anything. And then. In another house. I don't know. This one was probably because I was very tired. But I got up one night um, because I had to pee. And I went, like, to walk down the hallway and I saw something walking at me. Oh, wow. And I just remember I peed myself. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I I reckon it could have very well have been something. Yeah. And I remember because we lived in, like, a mining town in Tassie. And so the guy had, like, one of those, like... You lived in Tassie. I didn't know that. Learning something new. Yeah. So the guy had, like, one of those, like, mining pitchfork thingies and oh, so okay. he's like just walking a little pitchfork thing wow you probably yeah jesus that's yeah. crazy yeah and you remember that like so vividly mm. and mm. no wonder you peed yourself a little bit you <laughs> thought something was coming at <laughs> you like in the hallway <laughs> it wasn't like violent he was just like walking down the hallway yeah. like just suspended in time um which lends to my theory of spookiness is that i think that all time is happening all at the same time and so that's what ghosts are there's just like projections of like our time loops are like I feel like it's more they're just stuck in in that period. Yeah. And just, like, yeah, overlap. As, like, our time progresses, yeah. like, they're just And remain. I've seen, yeah, the theories of, like, yeah, because they're stuck in, like, their movement or whatever. So, like, when they walk through a wall, for example. Yeah, they're on the way to something else. Yeah, like, that wall didn't used to be there that's in their, their path. Time. Yeah, yeah, that's their path. And now I'll talk about my house currently that I live yeah. in. Um, so maybe six months after my son was born, I started having these, like, really – like violent dreams of like someone in his room like trying to hurt him mm. like paranormal something. activity style. yeah yeah it was like an older man and we had this armchair in his room as well and so in my dream i'd like walk down into his room and i'd see this man in the armchair wow and also we have um a baby monitor but it is a non-wi-fi one because the wi-fi ones get hacked <laughs> yes yes um but it lights up for sound and movement and so for a period of time and we've since thrown that one out um but it would just like light up randomly at night. Okay. Um, and just for like different time periods or whatever. And we thought that maybe it was like malfunctioning. Anyway, so I kept having these dreams. And so then I used to, in the middle of the day, because you can talk through it. Yeah. So I used to just like scream into it, like, go away. You're like, <laughs> it's like, it's weird because you, you don't want to feel silly if nothing's yeah. there. But like, you, you're also in a way acknowledging that something is there because yeah. you've got your dreams and you've got these, these feelings. Yeah. And I would also walk in and do the whole like, hi, like, I acknowledge that you're here. Um, we don't really need you here. Like, can you please move on? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not going to hurt you. Like, please don't hurt us kind of thing. And like, yeah, you feel silly because like the middle of the day you're in there talking to a wall. Yeah. Um, and then I would have dreams that now like someone was helping me, like okay. this old man. So then I just saged my house. Yep. Um, and the monitor stopped malfunctioning and I stopped having the dreams. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, yeah. It's it, yeah. It's funny because like you don't want to seem silly, but like you're still kind of proactive in yeah. that sense. Because I mean, you you've we've always like dabbled in like yeah. or been interested in like the the witchy and yeah. the spirituality stuff. We're really keen on like yeah. when in doubt, just cleanse it and everything. Yeah, and I know um one of my well like a couple of my friends, they live in a house as you do, um and they experienced some entities as well, and they said that they saged their house and they stopped. And so it's that thing, it's like, oh, like, could it just be, like, you know, like, sleep paralysis or, like, yeah, just nightmares or whatever. But I think when it happens to, like, several people or mm-hmm. whatever and you're, like, and the sage works, it's like, yeah, is it just that, um like, group mentality? Mm-hmm. And then, or, or it's like, oh, I sage, like, or if it'll it, go away. Like, or if it's, like, like you placebo yourself almost. Yeah, exactly. Like, you yeah. feel safe because of the sage yeah. and, you, and everything's just gone. Yeah. Then did it ever really happen? Yeah. Yeah, wow, interesting. I just can't get over you, like, being grabbed, like, when you were younger. Yeah, like, holy shit. Fucked. I've never, I don't think I've ever, well, no, I know for a fact my house was never haunted, despite all the 
past dead pets in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, no, I never lived in, like, haunted houses. Never, like, I'm someone who, like, I can get pretty scared pretty easily with that type of thing. But, like, I want to be so open to, like, an experience, you yeah. know? Because, like, I believe in it, but I've never experienced anything in it. And, I like, I want validation. Mm. Yeah. It's probably why I was so keen on going to Beechworth, because the Beechworth Asylum is, like, the number two rated. What's number one? Somewhere in Toronto. Um... It was in somewhere in New South Wales, I think. Oh. But like, Toowoomba used to be like the most. Um, it really depends on the article you read. Yeah. Uh, but one article that I have, there's like uh, the Monte Cristo homestead in New South Wales. Oh, yeah, I don't I've know. Heard of that. But anyway, yeah. So I was like so keen for Beechworth because it's number two. It was slightly disappointing in a way, but we did have like a group yeah. experience. But anyway, we'll, sh- we'll get we'll get oh. back to that. We'll get later. Oh. But yeah, for me, yeah. Um, but I have been to like the, the Geelong Jail. We did like. Because you could pay for, like, a paranormal investigation experience. And I think we got some things. And I think I got, like, a picture of something. But, like, I can't, I haven't since been able to find the picture. But, yeah, I don't know. It was it was an interesting experience. Like, one girl we organized to go with, like, she was really, she got really emotional when we got there. So, like, we felt like she was very, like, like an empath mm. sort of vibe. Like, she got so upset and distraught that, like, we had to reschedule. Oh, shit. And then, so we went again, and then she was kind of still freaking why, out. Was but... she in your group? Yeah, she was in oh, my I was group. Gonna, I was like, why wouldn't you just go with her? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> this was a private, like, group oh, yeah. arrangement for this um, investigation. And, yeah, so we went, came back another time, and, like, yeah, it was it was pretty cool, pretty gnarly, but, like, I don't remember it that much, mm. I suppose, because I wasn't that much experience yeah. happening. It was. I'm also keen on the history as well, mm. but maybe we might try to go back there again one day and just be a bit more open yeah. but yeah for me no real paranormal like experiences yeah. i yearn for it though i want it <laughs> i've done geelong jail during the daytime oh okay and i've also done beechworth at night and day yeah and unless you're inside where it's dark it's like oh like this is actually quite lovely like <laughs> yeah yeah so the nighttime is the heightened experience mm. as well mm. So yeah, Kenzie and I, we both went to Beechworth Asylum together yes. as like a friend group activity, fun yes. little weekend getaway. Um, and then you've since been again mm-hmm. with Luke. Yeah. Um, what were your experiences during Beechworth? Um, I only had like one. Well, and our friend had one as well. Yeah. So I had one where we were standing in a group. It was, um, a, it was a pretty big group as well. And I was, feel like, and they say an experience is never guaranteed, which is fair yeah. and whatever. And I feel like... As a smaller group, like, you probably have more experiences or whatever. Or then, like, now the ghosties are probably like, fuck these people, like, we're not... I mean, but if they're in a time loop and they'd have no idea what the fuck's going on on the outside, like... Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so also the tour guide was saying, like, because I know a lot of tours, they can be, like, quite theatrical when they dress up and stuff. Yeah, like, we had... Our guide was called the matron. Yeah, she was dressed as matron. But she said that it used to be, like, very theatrical and stuff. But they said since they've toned it down that they've had more experiences. Because it's like, yeah, respect like the ghosts. Like, yeah. Don't make fun of don't res- them being in the asylum. Don't disrespect the time period. Because, yeah, that would cause all sorts of like, potential like PTSD yeah. for them and stuff. Um, so we were standing in a group um, and there was quite a significant gap between me and the person standing behind me. And it was our friend who was standing behind me. And so I knew, like, I could sense like how far away he was standing. And then... So we went to walk forward and I felt like I had just gotten like, like shoulder tapped. Like I got shoved yeah. like, like you know, way. when you walk past somebody and like, like, yeah. like and that. you run yeah. into them. Yeah. But like from the back. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh, like I said to my friend, I was like, did you push me? And he's like, nah. And then as I turned around as well, I could see that he was like quite a distance behind me. So yeah. there's that. Yeah, that's so cool though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, like, it didn't feel, like, aggressive. It was just, like, someone bumping into me. Yeah, like, and you the, were in their way. Yeah, and there was no one, yeah, to the side of me either. Well, again, there was, like, a significant gap. And then I was, like, at the front of the group. So it wasn't, like, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing because in a big group, because you're kind of all moving around. you got all different things mm. to look at and it's really hard. Oh, we had a weird-ass chick in our group oh as my well. God, she, she was on something. On something. <laughs> the poor matron. Yeah, the tour guide was like, am I being rude to her? I'm like, no, you need to you're keep being, her off this tour. You're being very stern. Yeah. yeah no, like, was great. Oh, just, she just kept asking questions and like... Stupid. If she waited yeah, five, five seconds, seconds <laughs> that question would be answered. Yeah. She's literally me when I'm reading. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember, this is a little bit off topic, but like we're in the tour, like tour guide was explaining how like they had segregated the men and the women but then um, <laughs> that she was like, oh, but, you know, there were still lots of children here. And the woman's like, but if they were segregated, how were their children? And it's like, well, <laughs> they because they always, yeah, they find ways, you dickhead. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Either it was like her son or like a little brother or something. Yeah. Like he, the poor guy was like embarrassed, yeah. I feel. Yeah. But, um, yeah no. And it's just like everyone like, oh, whoa. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like, she right, was calm down. Like it's a decrepit old building. Yeah. Like, 
Um, I think we also had, I think there must have been like a basement area, yeah. or like a downstairs area. And there was like a gate in front of mm-hmm. us. I think we all heard like footsteps we and stuff out of that. Yeah. Like collective experience, yeah. sure. But yeah. like, I, I'll again. talk about when I went with Luke because we have something from that Ooh. and we can put it on the stories. Oh, cool. cool, yeah. cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, I want to see yeah. it. I think I've shown it to you. Maybe. But, but it was a long time ago. But yeah, like other than the collective like footsteps experience. Yeah. And but... then, yeah, our friend also, she said she was looking down. So our tour guide was like kind of like off to the right or whatever. And we were all looking to the right. And our friend was looking down a corridor to the left. And she said that like as she was looking down, she could hear like footsteps like progressively like getting faster and coming towards her. Yep. And then like when she went to like take a photo or whatever, like they stopped. Yeah. And and that was in like one of yeah the most active areas. Yeah, I think one of the areas was yeah she got us all looking down a hallway mm. and like and like you could see shadows like, like moving past. past. Yeah, but I feel like because it was so far away and it's already dark, it's yeah. like it, surely that's like a trick of the light yeah. situation. Although, so if we're done with when we went to Beechworth, yeah, I feel like it was a pretty pretty cool asylum. Yeah. Um, I just like the history as well. Yeah, like yeah. It's the second most haunted, and yet we, well, I personally hardly get yeah. experience. No, yeah, it was I great. I think if you went and did, like, the paranormal investigation. Sure. Like, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. So when I went with Luke, we went, so when we went, I went with Claire, when Claire and I went together, we did, like, the 9 p.m. tour or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, it was late. Yeah, it was late, um, and it was dark already. But when I went with Luke, it was daylight savings, so it was still quite light, and we did, like, like 7.30. So it was dark yep. by the time we left, but it was light when we were sort of just starting to walk around. Did you have a big group? Like, probably about the same size. Okay. But because it was holidays as well, oh, that's right. there was a lot of children. I remember mentioning this to you. And they said that, like, it's recommended for, like, 13 years and up, like, not mm. for young children. But, like, anyway. And there's, like, specific tours that you can take the children on. And I think it's also because, like, you know, the steps are dodgy. They're not really yeah. child-friendly. Everything's old. Like, they probably want to touch things mm. and, like, grab things. Yeah. And, like, it's probably not the yeah. best, ch- most child-friendly thing. And they were saying, thing. like, um, because, like, the history is quite macabre. Um a carb, what a word. <laughs> <laughs> like that one. <laughs> anyway, and so our tour guide, like he was talking about, and I, I just, I love the history of the place. Yeah. And he was telling me things, and he's like, okay, but I won't say anymore because, like, of the children listening. <sighs> and I was like, well, that ruined it. Like, take the kids on the date, and it's like, if you want, like, the child free, yeah, take them on the historical Have tour. Have a child friendly time. Yeah, which as they well. do, and they say, like, take kids on the historical tour during the day. Yeah. It's like, don't take them on the ghost tour yeah. at night because I want all the creepy shit. I want all, yeah. like, the gross you, stuff. You want the murderers, and you want the, mm. the, yeah. Yeah. All the so, stuff. when we went on that one... As we say, as we're talking about, like, haunting and hunting <laughs> Adeline, <laughs> we don't want that. Yeah. We, like, did that hallway thing where you see, like, the shadow man. And, like, again, you could see the light, like, going on and off yeah. as if someone's walking past it. Yeah. And, like, yeah, you go on the outside and there's nothing there that could, like, make that happen. So, mm. whatever. Then, yeah, we went down to the basement and we all heard the footsteps. But then Luke took a photo of the grate and there is... To me, very clearly a face. Can like, I yeah, see I'll that again? You, yeah. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure you've shown so me this before. So on, like, originally, like, in the photo, you can't see it, but then, like, when you turn, like, the brightness up on it, you can oh, see yeah. it, so. Yeah. So yeah, we'll pop that up on the stories, yeah, we'll I guess. The stories and... We need to give a context to it, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we also did an escape room. Oh, yes. At the did. Beechworth Asylum. But I think my competitiveness in completing the escape room overrided the it's haunted the, the haunted aspect yes. of it and the fact that we were in a haunted, like, area. Not that anything actually happened while we were doing it anyway. Oh, yes. Here we go. All right. We're getting there. We get. All right. Where am I supposed to be looking? Oh, you'll see it. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> that is terrifying. Yeah. There's nothing... I'm surprised you were even able to, like, spot that, like, on a glance. Like, I would have no clue. Yeah. And you're like, there's a face there. Yeah. It's not swiping. Because I zoomed in. Oh, there we go. Oh, my God. That is insane. Well done. (laughs) (laughs) Terrifying. (laughs) It's like, there's no distinguishable features. I think it looks like someone's head. Yeah, it's just like, and like, no hair, just head. Bold. Yeah, gross. Gross, yeah, yeah, ugh. That's insane. What a wonderful photo, though. Yeah. I still can't believe you even spotted out well, we're like, the shape of the head. Because we're just taking photos. And then we were like, oh, let's just enhance it because it's dark. Yeah. And we're like, Ugh. Yeah. People forget, I think, forget to do that yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Any other creepy stories or any, yeah. like, haunting situations? I think that's all my stories of yeah. haunted stuff. Yeah. I would love to go to more places, though. Yeah. But you've started a family, so that makes it really difficult for me, Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd love to go and do J Ward. Luke's done J Ward. What's J Ward? Ararat. Oh yeah, I've heard that somewhere like either Ballarat or Ararat yeah. is pretty gnarly. Yeah. Wow, we've got to go there. Alrighty, so I found a couple of different articles. Oh no, actually one article actually. 
of the most haunted places in Australia. Here we go. A list. This is uh, thanks to news.com.au. Thank you, news.com.au. <laughs> Shout out. So according to them, the number one haunted place in Australia is the Monte Cristo Homestead in Juni mm-hmm. in New South Wales. So the description of this homestead. Considered Australia's most haunted house, the Monte Cristo Homestead, built in 1884, has had its fair share of weird happenings throughout the years. It is believed at least 10 ghosts haunt this homestead, with reported sightings of a woman in a period dress walking along the veranda leading to bloodstained steps, which is where a former maid of the household once died. Ugh, ew. Gross. I feel like it's not even that bad, though. Like, a spirit just walking around. Like, yeah, but bloodstained footsteps. Yeah. It's probably where the bloodstained footsteps... It's probably not still bloodstained, um, surely. All right. Not. And number two is our favourite, or not so favourite, uh, the Beechworth Asylum. Hell yeah. In Beechworth, Victoria. Each like little description is just like perhaps like an experience and obviously like a generalization of what activity is yeah. there. So like obviously there may be other experiences that just yeah. it's a little article like it's not going to have a whole essay on what happens there. So yeah, several years ago, a 10 year old boy on a ghost tour at Beechworth Asylum was seen talking to himself. When his parents asked who he was talking to, he said he was talking to a boy called James. Ooh, James. Ooh. <laughs> Creepy. After some research, it turns out there was a child by the same name who died at the asylum. In fact, it is estimated that over 9,000 patients died at Beechworth throughout its 128 years of operation, and you can still hear children's laughter in its corridors. Brave enough? The Beechworth Asylum is frequent ghost tours. <laughs> All right, number three is the Jenilin Caves in the Blue Mountains, New oh, South Wales. A lot on this list is based in New South Wales, yeah. so something about New South Wales is fucking spooky. That's where we were colonised. I mean, yeah, true, but like, <laughs> still. <laughs> Colon- everywhere, technically. But Blue Mountains especially is like a mm. fucked place. Alrighty, you can argue that all caves are spooky, but not all caves have their own ghost. A guide who works in the caves recall an old man in a suit telling him once an unknown fact about a button in the reflective pools. When he tried to find the man afterwards, there was no sign of him. It is thought the man could be James Wilbur, a caretaker of the caves who loved them so much that he requests his ashes be scattered there. I know there is a, I think it's in Australia, it might be in the Blue Mountains, there is like a cave pool or something, there's like a river... Anyway, and okay. like lots of people have drowned there, and there's reports of like people like coming across someone, and they're like, "Oh, there's like a pool down there." Like, like they lure them there. Swim. Yeah. Oh, that's frightening yeah. and gross. Anytime I think of Blue Mountains, I think of Tomorrow and the Wolf again, <laughs> and like hell, and the fact that it was yeah. filmed around there. And I think of Picnic at Hanging Rock. Oh yeah, true, true. Oh yeah, Picnic at Hanging Rock. Mm. That is a tumultuous story in Australian oh. culture. Yeah. Fucking hell. Wow, I completely forgot about Picnic at Hanging Rock. There's, like, theatre productions based on that and stuff as well. That's cool. Yeah, we did it in, like, drama or something as well. Anyway, back to the list. Number four is the National Film and Sound Archive in Canberra. Uh, Before it was the National Film and Sound Archive, Canberra's famed building was the Australian Institute of Anatomy, where it's housed hundreds of human skeletons and body parts and animal specimens, including Farlap's heart, Ned Kelly's skull, and a mummy from Papua New Guinea. What the fuck? (laughs) Staff in recent years have witnessed objects moving by themselves and weird noises coming from recording booths, which once served as dissection labs. Ooh, gross. Number five is the Red Bank Tunnel in Picton, New South Wales. Another New South Wales favourite. Despite its small town charm, Picton has been dubbed Australia's most haunted town. In 1916, a young woman by the name of Emily Bollard was walking through the town's Red Bank Tunnel when she was hit and killed by a train. Residents and tourists have since reported seeing a white flowing figure of a woman who has no face within the tunnel. In case that isn't spooky enough, there have been also been reports of lights floating above people's heads, sudden drops in temperature, and ghostly children appearing out of the darkness. Oh, not the ghostly children, because they're always demons. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, always, because they... Inhabit, present yeah they present as children because then they think that they think they're innocent they lure you into a false sense of security mm. then bam possess, possess. <laughs> number six is the Fremantle Arts Centre in Western Australia with doors opening and closing by themselves the sound of laughter and crying when there's no one around oh, and misty laughter. figures appearing in photographs Yuck. there's more to this art centre than meets the eye formerly an asylum for the criminally insane fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> visitors have been told of being mysteriously locked in old cells plus a paranormal investigator once claimed he could smell burning flesh in an area that was used to administer electric shock treatment to patients mm. yeah i heard that like as a paranormal sense like you know the smell of mm. whatever significantly tragically yeah. happened there can yeah. or come about like sulfur like if you smell yeah, sulfur, sulfur yeah. fire that's normally like a bad sign mm. and number seven is sydney's quarantine station in new south wales 
For over 150 years, the North Head Quarantine Station was used to isolate people who had been exposed to diseases like the bubonic plague, Spanish influenza, and smallpox. Countless people died from disease and neglect, living in, in squalid, squalid? Squalor? Not squalor. Oh. S-Q-U-A-L-I-D. Squalid. Oh. Squalid conditions and their spirits are said to haunt the now defunct buildings. And afterwards, it's always like, brave enough, this is a gross <laughs> tour. All right, number eight, the old Melbourne jail. Ooh, Melbourne yes. jail's a doozy. All the old jails are just fucked. Yeah. No surprise here, the old Melbourne jail is haunted. The jail once housed criminals, thieves, and is where Ned Kelly and around yeah, yeah. 133 others were hanged between 1842 and 1929. Visitors in the jail have since had creepy experiences, hearing strange noises and experiencing sudden drops in temperature. What was that town that we stopped by on the way to Beechworth? That was Ned Kelly's town. Glen Rowan. Glen Rowan. Surely that place is haunted because of... It yeah. was the, like the final standoff yeah, and stuff, wasn't it? Stand, yeah before obviously arrested and yeah cashiered yeah surely like, i've been thinking about that sorry what's the name of it again glen rowan glen rowan i always forget what it's called <laughs> glen rowan i need to ingrain it in my mind all right number nine on this list is port arthur tasmania yeah, and we know why yeah and also just yeah convicts in general convicts in general and yeah. like just yeah. a massacre yeah that's why we have gun laws people yeah for sure all right Called Hell on Earth by its convicted prisoners, Port Arthur is believed to be one of the Southern Hemisphere's most active haunted places. During its 47 years as a conv- convict settlement, over a thousand people perished within its boundaries, and it's said that the souls still linger. In the last two decades, more than 2,000 paranormal incidents have been recorded. The museum even has an unusual occurrence form on hand for anyone wanting to report an otherworldly incident. Ah, oh, I, I would have thought it would have had a mention of like a massacre because like that would be traumatic and like the energy of that could have yeah. enhanced that area but oh no mention of it but okay number 10 is devil's pool in queensland could that be the pool you're talking about quote he came for a visit and stayed forever is written on a plaque near the swimming spot since 1959 17 have died at the popular swimming spot and most recent being in november 2008 and it might go a little deeper than bad luck aboriginal folklore says a woman drowned at the pool and is now believed to now haunt the pool that's, I just felt like I said that sentence weird. Anyway, luring men t- to join her in death. To top it off, people have reported strange apparitions and the sound of someone crying. Does that sound like the familiar yeah, one? Like, yeah. Apologies, I should have said indigenous folklore, but the article, I just read the article. And number 11 is the Princess Theatre in Victoria. I feel like I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> like most great performance venues, Melbourne's famous Princess Theatre plays host to its own resident ghost. In 1888, actor Frederick... Federici, I don't know, was performing in a production of Faust, F-A-U-S-T, mm-hmm. on its opening night. As the play finished, Federici suffered a heart attack and died as the curtain went down. Ooh, oh, eerie. I got <laughs> Being a little theatre nerd, of course you would. <laughs> and number 12 is the Wakehurst Parkway, New South Wales. Aside from connecting the suburbs of Seaforth and Narrabeen, Sydney's notorious highway has been infamously used as a dumping ground for murder victims and, <laughs> and garnered quite a few haunting stories, including that of a ghost named Kelly. Legend has it that if you drive at night, Kelly will appear in the back seat, and unless you tell her to get out, she will take control of the car and steer you off the road yuck, to your doom. Yuck, that should yuck, be number yuck, one, bro. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Because the thing with like spirits and like hauntings is like you have the authority and you have yeah. the power. You just tell them to go. Yeah. And Imagine they should go. Like looking in your back in your wind, in your mirror though and seeing someone in the car. Yuck. Every time I drive home at night from work, like I'm always like glancing in the back seat yeah, and I'm same. always thinking, what if this time someone's in the back exactly. seat? No, no, it happened to my friend, right? Oh, no. So she has a car seat in a car and um she'd already dropped her kid off and she looked back and there was like a baby in her car seat but it was a baby doll okay, her daughter oh had God. put there but she's like i nearly crashed my car because i looked back and there's a fucking baby in the yeah. car seat she's like i nearly lost my damn mind or sometimes i'll just like look up at the roof and like like i don't want to see a spider or a huntsman yeah. like that's the last thing you want but i'm always yeah. like aware and yeah. like especially looking in the back seat i'm like yeah. imagine if i see a face right now Same. like I will, I will eat myself off this road oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow. right, let's talk about Hanging Rock. So Hanging right. Rock was originally a novel, got turned into a movie in 1975. There was a TV series as well with Natalie Dormer. Series. Yes, there was. Um, the movie is iconic. Um, but anyway, so I'll just read. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> At the centre of this mystery is the disappearance of three schoolgirls and a teacher during a school picnic in the year 1900. Students and faculty from the nearby Upper Yard College were having a picnic during a day trip to Hanging Rock. 
During the picnic, four students named Miranda, Irma, Marianne and Edith decided to climb one of the location's monoliths with their teacher, Miss McCraw, following after them. At first, only Edith returned from the climb. When she returned to the picnic, she was in hysterics and she had no memory of what had happened on the monolith. Organised searches for the three students and their teacher were carried out, but only Irma was ever found. In addition to all of that, strange events continued to happen around the members of Appleyard College, with some of them perishing in a fire and others found dead, apparently from suicide. Though there were more searches in the years that followed the incident, the students and teachers that disappeared on Valentine's Day were never seen again. One, whenever I think about Hanging Rock, I know that Ed Sheeran did like a Nova Red Room there. <laughs> oh my god, how insensitive. <laughs> yeah. But also, so everyone's like, is this story true? Like what happened? So apparently the author of the book um, has a history of not giving straight answers to the question. Ooh. But like, why give your hand away now? Yeah, but then there's also like a lot of like pseudo like historic stuff that like kind of points to yes, this did happen. But also like, no, it didn't. So it might just be one of those things where like maybe a couple of people went missing and then they've created this story around it. Perhaps, yeah. So dates mentioned in the story weren't accurate to the real 1900. For example, the week Valentine's Day fell on was wrong and so it was the stated date of Easter Sunday that year. Also, Appleyard College doesn't seem to be real. I swear to fucking God, that's a ghost. I'm hearing like a whining out over here. <gasps> they have small children. Yeah, it, it did sound like small children. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Fine. <laughs> Jeez, we're freaking oh ourselves out. It's daytime. What's going on? Um, also, Appleyard College doesn't seem to re- be real either, although it could be based on the nearby Clyde Girls Grammar School, which Lindsay attended when she was younger. So the author story. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Um, on the bright side, though, there is an explanation for the disappearance at Hanging Rock. Lindsay actually wrote a conclusive ending for the book, but the final chapter was removed from the draft in order to keep the story mysterious and ambiguous. I mean, why not have something, yeah, so mysterious and ambiguous? Yeah. Like, I'm going to try and find it because it said the explanation's pretty bizarre. I don't know. With the TV show, they're trying to they make it out to seem like they were, like, murdered and stuff and, like, integration with, like, a boys' school and, like, they were on a trip as well and it was all that type of thing. Um, in the movie, it's just, like, really, like, spooky and, like, mm. I suppose it's one of those mysteries where you never know, so you can actually put all sorts of twists on it. All right, here we go. Ugh, I don't like this already. I just really hated the movie. <laughs> You loved it, but you hate it. Yeah. Just like the vibe of it. It's like one of those things, like, it's just forever like a cursed type of story. Like, no yeah. matter how it's depicted, it's just always going to come off as weird and creepy yeah. vibes. Okay, so, um, I think Aliens is the missing chapter, basically. Oh, okay, yeah. right, right. <laughs> I mean, it's not out of the question, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Oh, love that. I didn't even, like, think about that, but anytime anything spooky or, like, extremely mysterious happens, if it's not outright murder or people's incompetence, of hiking and you know moving yeah. around bushland it's definitely aliens yeah. or animals but yeah Alrighty, moving on uh have a couple of like little paragraphs and excerpts about other sort of haunted areas in australia hell yeah um we're doing really well for time so i'm happy to just like keep going until we oh, yeah. decide to get a bit bored, <laughs> <Decide> to get <laughs> bored. <laughs> waste of time for 1989 to come out yeah Alrighty, this is a little excerpt about the Aradale Mental Asylum. Located in regional Victoria, this asylum was built in 1865, a time when little was known of mental health conditions. The building administered lobotomies and electroshock treatments on its patients, resulting in over 13,000 deaths on the premises. Oh, shit, fucking Jesus hell. Jesus Christ. 13,000. 13 in itself isn't yeah. like a bad number, but imagine well, that amplified. Remember at Beechworth, they didn't have the exact... So they had the recorded deaths. And then... Who knows how yeah, many? But then who knows yeah, how many? And then there was all that. Sorry, going back to Beechworth as well. They believe that the headman, just like the main guy, whatever his name was, um, his office was also used to perform autopsies, unauthorized autopsies. Oh. And there were body parts. And they remember they think there's a basement because oh, when yeah, you go down right. that step, it's hollow. Yeah. And they think that that's where the body parts are that were never recovered. However, the building is heritage listed. Oh, yeah, so they can't. So they can't dig it up. And if they were to dig it up and find the body parts, they have to find living family members to DNA first match to, stuff. and to return the body parts to the living family members. Yeah, Jesus Christ, that's yeah. so gross. Yeah. Ugh. So it's a whole logistical red tape nightmare. Yeah, fucking hell. Back to Aradale. Thank you for that, Kenzie. You're welcome. One notable ghost that haunts the halls of Aradale Mental Asylum is Nurse Kerry, who is believed to walk the women's wards. Many have heard her voice and the clicking of her heels. Nurse Kerry isn't the only ghost to remain in Aradale, though. Some visitors have reported seeing shadow people at the halls, while others claim they've been scratched, bitten, and pushed. Yuck. My biggest fear is just, like, being scratched. Being scratched, yeah. Remember there was that, they told that story of that woman who 
like walked in and was like, "What do you got for me?" or whatever. Like, and she I don't had, had like claw. She had like not like scratches only, all down her back. It was like a couple of years ago, but like I feel like I don't remember much. Baby, I remember I everything. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's a there's this place called Kapunda in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Kampunda, just an hour out of Adelaide, is widely considered the most haunted town in Australia. It's funny, there's all these declarations like, this is the haunted, most haunted town, this is this the most is, yeah. haunted house, this is the yeah. most haunted asylum. Who bloody knows? While Kampunda itself is quite spooky, the North Kapunda Hotel in particular has a reputation for being one of the scariest places in the town. The building boasts a number of different ghosts, from the spirits of two little girls to a mysterious malevolent entity in black. Oh, that doesn't sound yeah. great. We Someone... should go. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's just go. Quick trip to Adelaide. Yeah, it's it's like an hour's drive. Is it like a 40-minute flight? It's a 40-minute 40, 40 flight, but we to can, drive, yeah. Weekend trip. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the spirits seen on the property are two young girls, though it is it is said that one of the girls remains in the upstairs area of the hotel to avoid an evil spirit. Ooh. Another spirit believed to haunt the property is that of Dr. Blood. Yes, you read that correctly. <laughs> Dr. Blood is said to have performed shocking experiments on humans. Finally, the man in black is another spirit frequently spotted at the hotel. He is said to dress entirely in black and sport a wide-brimmed hat. He has a misogynistic side, with the spirit terrifying the female ghosts and attacking the hotel's female visitors fuck also this list is thanks to insiderguides.com.au thanks insider guides. But, but, okay there's another one called the richmond bridge but it's in tasmania so tasmania's richmond bridge is notable for two reasons first it is the oldest bridge in australia and second it holds the title of australia's most haunted bridge we're getting every niche here <laughs> i love a good bridge yeah <laughs> it is said that a spirit named george grover lives on the bridge after being murdered while overseeing repairs. Some claim to see Grover stalking them and with many experiencing an overwhelming sense of aggression from the spirit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Last thing you want is like an aggressive spirit that's not like an outright demon, but like mm. just angry energy. And the last one before we move on, uh, Adelaide Arcade. Adelaide Arcade is one of the oldest shopping arcades in Australia, having operated since the mid 1800s. Behind the glossy storefronts is a dark and gruesome history that lives on through the ghosts that haunts its halls. The most famous ghosts here are that of former caretaker, former caretaker Francis Clooney. The caretaker's mangled body was found in the machinery that powered Adelaide Arcade's electric lighting. Your face. <laughs> and though it is presumed his death was accidental, there are rumours that he was murdered. Clooney's ghosts is apparently around to this day. Manhattan Dry Cleaners stands in the spot where Clooney met his end, and staff say that paranormal activity occurs daily, while several security guards claim to have seen the former caretaker. Have you heard about the um, the Adelaide Tunnels? No. And the tunnel people? Tunnel people sounds so fucking scary. Oh my god. Go on the Google machine. Go on the Google machine. Adelaide mach- Tunnel people. We're taking a trip to Adelaide. <laughs> I think Adelaide is lovely. I don't like it because it's landlocked, but apart from that, it's lovely. Architecture is beautiful. Uncovering the truth about Adelaide's secret tunnel. No, that doesn't sound right. That might be it. Let's go on TikTok. I'm going to I'm gonna go haunted. Underground. H- Henley Street, Street Catacombs? Is that it? Uh, how are? All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, we'll do J Ward and then I'll get to that. All right, so Kenzie mentioned a place in Ararat called J Ward and it's an asylum. Or it was an asylum for the criminally insane. Give me some spooky stories. Stories. I don't know, despite having... And then after this, we're going to quickly uh, read some stories from Reddit. We're going to become one of those, like, Am I the Arsehole podcasts. <laughs> Tell a story, commentate, move on. Inside the chilling corridors of Jaywater, a prison for the criminally insane. Set on a hill at Ararat in Western Victoria, they held some of the state's most violent and terrifying prisoners. Some were rehabilitated, some were moved, and others never left its bleak perimeter. Oh, oh I don't like that face. <laughs> Jaywater was a prison for the criminally insane, a place for people who couldn't be managed any other way, not in regular hospitals, not in regular jails, and not in the community. It was built in 1887 as a ward of Arradale, the nearby lunatic asylum, oh my God. as they were called at the time. And while it was progressive for its time, its haunting history will make your skin prickle. Alright, prickle my skin. Three men were executed and buried on site. Andrew Vare, who shot his former boss with a double barrel shotgun. Robert Francis Burns, who was convicted of murder only through circumstantial evidence. And Henry Morgan for the murder of a 10-year-old girl. They were buried upright within the prison walls with no coffins to ensure they could never rest. Wow. Legend has it that when the weather is cold enough for a frost, there are three clear circles on the ground inside the wall neatly lined up in a row about a metre each in diameter that never freeze. Even on a sunny day, something about it makes uncomfortable tingles run down your spine. Wow, love that. So Luke's been there. Has he recalled any experiences? No. No. All right, I'll quickly read some stories off Reddit if you want to look at the Adelaide one. Yeah, Jay, like, it sounded spooky, but then it kind of disappointing at the end. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it is spooky. Some stuff we're doing on the fly. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of Reddit, um, we're going to have some spooky stories or encounters 
in Australia. I'm probably not going to say just the username because, like, it's easily accessible. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. So this person says, I got chased down a really dark street going around 140 kilometers in a car by a giant white light. First of all, why are you going 140? Yeah. Anyway, there was five of us in the car and we all remember it the same way. It was one meter from the boot and then suddenly vanished. The street is dead straight and the light was around 1.5 meters in diameter and super fucking bright. Like, perfect white. Once we got near town, it stopped dead and vanished. It's near a place called Jenny Dixon Reserve. Jenny Dixon was murdered and dropped off a cliff nearby. It's sad that a ghost haunts that stretch. I'm very scientifically minded, but I have no way to justify that. Super weird. Last thing you ever want is like a bright light following yeah, you. Fine. Another person has posted, recently got the full Monty haunting at a motel in Bright, Victoria. Because I know, because I know your family likes to go to Bright. Super cold room, weird feelings, heavy weight on my back, bed shaking. Was scared at first, but then got pissed off with it and told it to fuck off, and it did. <laughs> Never in my life would I have thought that what happened was possible. I no doubt whether I will ever forget it. Yeah, that's the thing. You just tell it to leave or yeah. just. Right, actually, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if anything I've spooky. Any I've been to a chuka, yeah. And yeah, just like the, the thing, like even if you don't believe it and like you feel silly, like you tell it to leave and it most likely will leave. Yeah. I wonder if like when you die, there's like a spirit course. Like this is the etiquette. Yeah. Like if someone, <laughs> if like a medium or like someone tells you to leave, you have to go. Yeah. <laughs> you got to respect that. Uh, imagine. We respect consent. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, another person wrote, was walking down the Harbour Bridge steps one night when the lights went out. A, uh, a silent woman wearing a long skirt passed me. Unnerved, I made it out on, into the rocks to find the area in darkness, a power outage. Walking the older street near the small replica shop by Suzanne Place, Susanna Place, I saw in the distance someone walking towards me with a hunchback in what appears to be rags rattling chains Ugh. the way he's writing this out is weird refusing to believe in ghosts i approached and greeted him turned out he and the women were actors in one of the nighttime walking tours oh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i would have shat myself lucky he went up and said i would have ended my life <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a funny stupid comment like once i saw a car indicating before they switch lanes <laughs> smart ass <laughs> Someone <laughs> wrote, we stumbled on an enormous turd under the Harbour Bridge one cold morning. That was spooky as. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, another mention of the quarantine station in North Head, Sydney. Oh. Uh, it was established after World War One to clean up the ships from coming from Europe with smallpox, lots of deaths and ghost encounters. We went after a storm and freaked out as I swear I nearly vomited after seeing the morgue. Couldn't even walk into several buildings as there was a presence that just freaked me out. At the end of the tour, other rangers said other people had similar experiences. Never again. See, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to see something. You can just like feel the vibe yeah. is off. Yeah, um, like people say like they walk into a room and like it feels like heavy. Yeah, like and, they like, know. The air is heavy, yeah. Uh, like, you know, like yeah. enhanced anxiety yeah, feeling. Like stale. Yeah, ugh, gross. I'll read one more story. And this is just like creepy things that's just happened to you in Australia. This person says, I was seven months pregnant, home alone and sitting at the kitchen table eating lunch. I could hear something being dragged across the kitchen bench and thought nothing of it until something was quite literally thrown at me. Being the sook I am, I ran outside absolutely hysterical and called my dad to come over and look through the house before I can consider going back inside. Lol. I'm glad to be out of the house though. While I regularly wake up at odd hours of the night to hear drinking glass being dragged across the kitchen bench or the kitchen light being on. Such an odd experience. But if it's consistently happening, like something is yeah, definitely there. Leave. All right, you got the tunnels, the Adelaide tunnels that you mentioned. The tunnel people, that just oh, creeps me the fuck out. No, I did not want haunting Adeline. <laughs> oh yeah, Bell Lee's Cave, the Henley Street Catacombs. Bell Lee's Cave, the largest part of Henley Street Catacombs, is located beneath the bustling Henley Street. Legend has it that the place is inhabited by the mysterious Adelaide Mole people. <sighs> Access to the catacombs can be found at various locations, including the Station Arcade and the McDonald's Car Park. But like, you have to like go mm. underground. <laughs> Mm. Bell Lee's cat cave is shrouded in urban legends, including the belief that it serves as a gateway to hell and that it is haunted by the ghost of Bell Lee himself, who lends his name to the cave. According to the legends, Bell Lee met his demise in 1890 when he was crushed by a rock fall within the cave. His ghost is said to haunt the cavern to this day, appearing as a morbidly obese figure with a finger permanently lodged in his belly button. It is said that gazing into his eyes will result in instant death. Despite the eerie tales surrounding Bell Lee's cave, it remains a popular destination for those seeking adventure and thrills. When I think of the, like just catacombs in general, I just think of the Paris catacombs and like how people get lost in there all the time. You have a story about that? Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Was well, it my friend's story? But anyway, 
um, the Hindley Street mole people are actually hiding from the cannibals. Oh my god. The cannibals eat the mole people. Okay, so, I have a friend who went to France, and he was staying with, I don't know, a friend of a friend who was French. And so, there's like catacomb tours of the catacombs, but like it barely touches on the surface, um, etc. There are parts that you can't get to. But this friend of a friend, who my friend went with, <laughs> um, knew his way in. So he took him and he said, I'm going to take you down there. And then, um, so they went down and he said there were parts where it was like waist deep in water that they were going through and like parts where they had to like swim through. Oh my and God. he said they came across other people and the guy said, if you come across other people, like he's like, while we're down here, he's like, do not speak English, speak French. He's like, and have your passport like strapped to your body because they will kill you. And probably, yeah, rob you, of yeah. course. Or if they don't kill you, they will rob you and just leave you to die. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, because he's like, this is like only for like the French. He's like, if they know that you're not French, like. If you're a tourist, you're fucking want. So they didn't, they did encounter people though. Imagine if you don't speak French and you're told you have to speak French if you interact. Yeah. I suppose you just say bonjour. Yeah. Well, also like, like I hope that he was told that before they went down. Yeah, for <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if it got to a point where I had to start swimming, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that is insane. Yeah. I just hear stories of people like the guides like losing their group or like the group loses the guides and like they find their way out mm. i'm sure there was a story somewhere of someone yeah losing their guide and they eventually found their way out but it took like a long time yuck yeah no creepy places like that is i remember a big there was me. um on our tours of b to earth as well they were saying that there were nights where like they'd have like 10 people in a group or whatever and they do the head counts when they leave the rooms and they said that they would end up with like 20 people or whatever like they'd count 20 oh, heads okay, leaving. Yeah. yeah that is so cool though mm. that's gnarly mm. sorry the night i went with luke they said at the end, they're like, I've been doing head counts and there's been more of you walking out of a room than going in. Wow. Yeah. They must, like, also have some sort of, like, they'll be able to see them in a mm. way. I'm not going to yeah. say medium aspect or psychic, but, yeah, that's crazy. Mm. And they're really, really strict on, like, all right, you've got to follow the group. Like, yeah. we've got to get a wriggle on sometimes. Yeah. And, like, yeah, they're very pedantic about the mm. head count. And I wonder if sometimes, like, when they rush you out, if it's because they've, like, seen something. Maybe. And they're like, it's time to go. Like, yeah. Ooh, I wonder. Yeah. I feel and like if you yeah if you're surrounding it, surely it gets to a point where you're able to like see yeah. spirits here remember and there. Remember, um, I don't know if you remember, but our tour guide for when we went together, um, she was saying that she used to be a skeptic, and yeah. then it took her like six months of working there. Yeah, and yeah. She's like, I am a believer. Yeah, she yeah. said something like that. Yeah. yeah. I suppose people take those jobs because they want to share show off the history and yeah. everything of the place, and they're very good storytellers and a yeah. little bit theatrical perhaps. Yeah. But yeah, and then you got to add that spiritual element to yeah. it too crazy alrighty I'm happy to be done with this episode this is gonna be pretty pretty big but we'll see how it goes yeah no worries so yeah hope you enjoyed some of the spooky stories and spooky aspects of Australia yeah. happy Halloween <laughs> happy Halloween if happy. you're going trick or treating I hope you get lots of candy and hope yeah, everyone's safe and well yes yeah be, stay safe out there yeah. um, next week we're starting the Play to Prisoner series going from one depressing book to another I didn't realise until we well, lined it all okay. up <laughs> Yeah, so keep an ear out for the the Play to Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy. And yeah, check us out on the socials. You'll find us on Instagram at letterbox underscore book underscore club. From there, our link tree is in our bio where you'll find us in all the places. TikTok, Spotify. Kenzie. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. <laughs> Don't fucking do this. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> nah, yeah, find us in all the places. Keep an ear out for next week. Happy Halloween. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.